Welcome to the New Zealand Van Life Vlog Part 2. My name's Flossy. Welcome to the Southern Hemisphere series. From the snow to the summer sunshine. Welcome to New Zealand, the country where I was born. Can't wait to take you with me. New Zealand is lush and green because it is so wet and water is an important element on, in and surrounding the islands. It rains an absolute bucket load here, and as we just experienced in the first few days of our trip here, a wet induction, a reminder of the power, force, nurturing waters of Aotearoa, New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud. Waterfalls are the next natural step for water, collecting into awas, rivers, amongst the mountains and the dormant volcanoes. We head to this one in the McLaren Ranges as we head towards the coast. Wow. Wow, finally. The sun has come up and when I woke up at five o'clock this morning to pee, it was a full moon out. It was beautiful. Look at that. Finally, it's summer. Wow. We've made a bit more progress here too. We have come down here, out here to visit my sister, down through Cambridge, by the Waikato River, up through here to the Kaimai Makua Rainforest Park and the waterfalls. And now today we're heading to Mount Monganui. everybody i hope you enjoyed this first episode of my southern hemisphere new zealand adventure i cannot wait to take you for a few more and finally the sun has come out and i am very very happy Woo! bring it on my last dose of the sea for a while as we plan to head down the north island predominantly on the inland highways Making it to what is colloquially known as the Mount, Tauranga and Mount Monganui are both a port and surfing oceanside towns respectively, separated by a winding and wide estuary. Yeah. <sighs> and I'm at the beach again! Surf, sunshine, summer, yay! I got this beautiful Kiwiana uh, bag from the market and now because I'm absolutely melting, it's high humidity and high heat, just over these sand dunes is the ocean. Yeah, this is what I came for. The sun has come out. Finally, seeing more family at the beach and I'm really happy now. The adjustment of arriving when it was cold and wet and rainy and a complete windstorm has faded to a distant memory. It was still gorgeous, but this is a whole nother level. I was drawn immediately to the waves, the roar, the pounding of the surf, tickling and dancing along the shore. They won't notice me behind this log. Oh, maybe there's chippies in this bag. Oh, darn, no chippies. Hurry up, Gus. Steve! 
Steve! Steve! Steve! Hey, wait up, bro. You're leading me on a wild goose chase here. No, wait, chippy hunt? Hey, Steve. They're looking at me. I don't know what's so interesting. They don't have any chippies here. Steve! New Zealand is a bird watcher's paradise, a destination for so many kinds of land, bush, and seabirds. I think Steve is trying to blend in here and not get spotted. Not only does the coastline bring glorious waves, but the wind is quite something here too. Close to the 40th parallel from the equator, we get the roaring 40s, 40 knot winds, which make great sailors and many wind and water lovers very happy as they fly up and over the waves propelled by their favorite combinations of the elements. <laughs> you can move. Kiwi fruit. Kiwi fruit vibes. Lots and lots and lots of kiwi fruit vibes. Visiting a few more family, we turned our compass southwest again, leaving the east coast and heading inland towards the geothermal country, but not without stay stopping at a few more waterfalls along the way. Whitewater rafting here. I mean, that's a hard no for me. Beautiful though. Color of the water. <laughs> 
Okeri Falls and the river that flows past the historical site of a now almost completely reclaimed by nature power station is a hot spot for those who lo love to dance with death and small flotation devices, hard hats and enough muscle to flip themselves right way up after being pummeled by the tug and toe of the emerald downhill cascade. For me, I prefer to stay dry around fresh water this ferocious and just soak up its energy and its power as it roars in chorus with the tui birds and the whispers of the fern and the manuka tree. incredible to be back in this forest with trees that I'm familiar with some of which I feel like I've forgotten this is the land that I have called home for a lot of my life and it is very special to me and there's this thing about when you have multiple homes belonging becomes complicated where do you belong is a place home what does home mean and I really thought about this loving of many places loving of many lands and then also my ancestry my genealogy my descent I am the descendant of Celtic folk from Ireland and Scotland and is that another home and the Maori folk have a word called whakapapa which is your genealogy or your ancestry a way of identifying yourself in relation to land and place sea sky and water <laughs> which you can hear in the background and I think that is a really special thing and it has been made me 
take a moment to question my ancestry connect with both this land which where I was born and where my family have been for only three generations um, and then the, the land of the indigenous Maori folk who live here the people whose land this rightfully is the unceded territories as we would call it in Canada um, there's a treaty of Waitangi here in New Zealand and there is constant ongoing court cases to return stolen land and pay reparations to Maori people for the invasion and genocide that the white folk did when they arrived here and so it makes me question my belonging as a guest and the relationship that I then want to cultivate. I'm allowed here, of course, but I want to gener uh, I want to nourish, nourish and cultivate connected relationships where I respect the culture, I learn about it, I understand the plants, the flora and the fauna, learn more about them so that I'm here in an educated way, in a respectful way, in a way that has relationship with land and plant, knowing the names in the Maori language of rivers and mountains and trees. Oh! Waterfalls, the beautiful demonstration of how clean water is purified by the forest as it makes its way downhill. After the rains we've just had over the past week, the river was high and flowing really fast. Hidden further down in the forest are caves, once used by the local Maori to hide from the genocidal invasion of the white man. Sacredness is heavy in the air as the roar from the falls is loud in the ears. The caves are dark, damp and eerie, and now their only inhabitants are glowworms and the giant weta a native insect that looks like what a grasshopper would have looked like in the dinosaur age. It's so beautiful to see nature reclaiming the forest, the edges of the cliff faces, once standing a large hydroelectric power, point, pl power plant. One of the first in the country, just before the turning of the 20th century. Barely anything remains left by the river, and dipping my toes into the fast flowing waters, I can see the power that humans have harnessed as the water rages past, 
grasping at my ankles, kept safely behind an old wooden fence. I figure putting my feet in that, that looks like cold and delicious for my sore swollen feet. <laughs> So last time we left you, we were here in the Kaimaimaku forest. We've driven all the way to Mount Monganui to see my auntie and uncle, spend some time dodging surf waves all along this coast. It's a big surfing area down the Mount the Mont, uh, at the Mount. Then we headed inland and we've headed to the geothermal area, which is around Rotorua. We stayed the night over here. And then we're coming down here to continue our way south. So it looks like we haven't traveled very far. The little gold dots are where we stay and continue on. It's pretty exciting. We've got a lot more area to cover as we have get to get here, I think by the end of the week. So exciting. And then when we get through this area, the um, landscape will change dramatically. So I'm very, very excited for that. Yeah. Hot springs, mud pools, geothermal, yeah. A few hundred kilometers down the North Island begins the high country where the center of the earth is at its closest to the surface, where the crust is a little more than a foot thick and hot molten magma is just below the surface and sending boiling mud and waters steaming towards the sky. Face, the canoe Hell's Gate is a reserve owned and protected by the local Maori, full of beautiful flora and fauna, which are all very important plants, providing food, clothing, shelter and medicine, as well as being important spiritual links to this unique environment. Hereheke, the flax plant, mamaku, the tree fern, manuka, the tea tree, and ponga, the iconic silver fern seen on the many New Zealand national teams, logos, and icons, a symbol of striving to a goal and to win. Waterfall, hot water waterfall. How orange the trees are from the sulfur in the air and the sulfur in the ground. Everything's just orange. Wow, the trees are so orange.
Geothermal activity is one of my favourite things about this part of New Zealand. Even down to my fondness of the heavy sulphury mineral smell in the air. With mud and water temperatures ranging from pleasant mid 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to the impossibly hot volcanic frying pans where the water is literally boiling on the surface of the mud at a scorching 110 to 120 degrees Celsius or 248 degrees Fahrenheit. The contrast between the mud, the forest, the forest where it's orange, it's just crazy. Looks like outer space. It's beautiful. Otherworldly. It's just like lakes of hot boiling mud. So close to the surface, the geothermal heat coming up from the boiling lava and magma underneath the Earth's crust. And here, the Earth's crust is super thin. And the air smells like sulfur, minerals, and this area is rich with indigenous Maori culture and history of using this mud for healing, antiseptic, for nourishing, coming back from war, and all of the healing properties like arthritis, rheumatism, antiseptic. It's just amazing! Long since regarded as sacred and healing place, the hot springs and boiling mud were also used for cooking, bathing, and treating ailments such as rheumatism, arthritis, and treating skin conditions and bites from those pesky flying bugs that have really taken a liking to my ankles. In places, the white crust is tinted yellow with sulfur, and the steam blowing its eggy aroma from the holes, cracks, and fissures in the rock around me over 100 degrees in some of these pools. Doesn't just look like this wonderfully weird, it looks like this wonderfully weird barren wasteland, like, and it smells amazing. I love the smell of minerals and sulfur. Some people hate it and think it smells like rotten eggs, but it reminds me of here. Just lots of little pockets of boiling water and steam coming up and the yellow bits are all sulfur. How yellow all of this is. The geothermal pools around here range from in the mid 30 degrees Celsius all the way up to over 100, 120 degrees Celsius where sometimes the sulfur will ignite. Like holy moly. It's just amazing. A mud volcano, very much alive. This one's about three and a half meters in height. And you can see it has erupted mud all down here. And this is one of the largest ones in a geothermal reserve. It's huge! Wow! It just reminds me of how close to the Earth's surface volcanic action, magma, hot. The Earth's crust looks more like the moon than the planet we are more familiar with. I can tell you with the utmost certainty that my body felt warm, my skin felt soft, and my tired feet and all were happily slathered in mud, heated, soaked, and relaxed by the end of this leg of the trip. Just delightful. In the next episode, we see an insight into Maori culture as we are invited into a small village. It's a miserable day and it's a perfect time to go sit in a hot tub full of beautiful mud and mineral uh, heavy geothermal water.
thank you so much for watching everybody it's been so fun to do these on the road and back in New Zealand definitely not in my own home set up in my van back at home but we're making it work in between the pockets of no reception and spotty cell phone coverage and no internet I hope you all enjoy so if you don't haven't already please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because this is one of many of this New Zealand series I can't wait to see you next week and a huge thank you as always to my Patreons and they get their real-time updates of where I am in the country. See you all next Wednesday. Bye.